What's going on, everybody? This is Lag on Lock here, and welcome to week four of the BYU Cougars here on NCAA 07 for the PSP. Let's go ahead and take a look at the ESPN magazine for this week. Iowa calls on their defense to get past the upset-minded Orange. Let's go ahead and take a look at that. And as you can see, the Syracuse Orange almost beat the number two team in the nation. It was a pretty close game. You can see that the score was 7-3 by the end of the first quarter, actually the first half. And then both teams scored uh, six points in the second half. But in the end, Syracuse, they couldn't come up with the upset. Player of the game, we have Gordon from Syracuse. He made three field goals, his longest being a 44-yarder. And then we have Clemens from Iowa, who had eight tackles for those tackles being for loss in two sacks so guys in the last video we lost to the Tulsa Golden Hurricane in a game where I thought we should have won the game just threw out some BS and kind of helped them win in my opinion I think that's how it happened there's no way a wide receiver can break two tackles and then hurdle and then still score a touchdown. So the score was 31-28. The players of the game, we have Sessions, who had 14 carries for 42 yards, two touchdowns, two receptions for 103 yards, and a receiving touchdown. And then for Tulsa, they had Bonet, their running back, who had 14 carries for 150 yards and three touchdowns. So now, guys, we're going to take a look at the end season recruiting. And Dominique Cook, his interest with our squad has gone down because we lost lost to Tulsa. I mean, Dominique was instrumental in forcing two turnovers in his last high school game. Okay, okay, okay. So it's just giving me a little bit of backstory of this guy. Not backstory, but kind of like a little bit of information about him. But as you can see, his discipline is poor and his potential is poor. So if we do get this guy, he's not going to grow as much as I, as much as I would like. Excuse me. So now we're number two on his interest level list and Cal, they move up to the number one spot. So now guys, taking a look at the top 25 polls here, we have the USC Trojans at number one after they had a bye week. At number two, we have the Iowa Hawkeyes who barely beat Syracuse 13 to nine. At number three, we have the Michigan Wolverines who beat Central Michigan 33 to 14. At number four, we have the Louisville Cardinals who beat Temple 19 to 14. At number five, we have the Miami Hurricanes who defeated Bam. 63 to 3. At number 6, we have the Ohio State Buckeyes as they defeated Texas 28 to 21. At number 7, we have the LSU Tigers who beat Arizona 39 to 7. At number 8, we have the Virginia Tech Hogies who defeated University of North Carolina 40 to 10. At number 9, we have the Texas Longhorns who lost to the Buckeyes 28 to 21. At number 10, we have the Tennessee Volunteers as they defeated Air Force 27 to 7. At number 11, we have the Florida State Seminoles as they triumph over Troy. They beat them 14 to nine. At number 12, we have the Purdue Boilmakers as they defeated Miami University 24 to 21. That was a close game. At number 13, we have the Boston College Eagles who defeated Clemson 27 to 24. Man, all these games are really close, man. At number 14, we have the Boise State Broncos as they defeated Oregon State 38 to 20. At number 15, we have the Auburn Tigers who beat Mississippi State 13 to zero. At number 16, we have the Virginia Cavaliers as they defeated Wyoming 27 to 17. At number 17, we have the Florida Gators as they defeated UCF 45 to 24. At number 18, we have the UTEP Miners who defeated Texas Tech 31 to 13. At number 19, we have the Cal Golden Bears who beat Minnesota 24 to 7. At number 20, we have the Georgia Bulldogs as they lost to South Carolina 20 to 13 in, up, in an upset. At number 21, we have the Texas A&M Aggies who beat UL 20 to 13. At Number 22, we have the Colorado Buffaloes as they defeated Colorado State 34 to 27. At number 23, we have Utah who beat NAU 41 to 0. At number 24, we have the Pittsburgh Panthers who are now ranked after beating Cincinnati 36 to 17. And last at number 25, we have the Arizona State Sun Devils as they lost to Nevada 36 to 17 in an upset. So guys, taking a look at the additional details here, we have Alabama, Southern Miss, Oklahoma, South Carolina, and North Carolina State. And the only team that was dropped out was number 14, Oklahoma. So guys, we are in week four, so I'd just like to keep you guys updated on how well we're doing within our conference. 
Right now, New Mexico Lobos are leading. They are one and one this year. They haven't played a conference game. At number two, we have the TCU Horn Frogs, who are two and zero. At number three, we have the Rebels, who are two and zero. At number four, we have Utah. They are two and zero as well. At number five, we have the Wyoming Cowboys, who are one and one. At number six, we have the BYU Cougars. Okay, we're not in a bad position. You know, I mean, it's still early in the season. We just got a lot of making up to do. At number seven, we have the Colorado State Rams who are one and one. At number eight, we have the Air Force Falcons who are zero and one. And last, we have the San Diego State Aztecs who are zero and one. So now guys, taking a look at the Heisman watch, number 97, Jason Green, the junior red shirt, left end from USC. He is still leading this thing. And then at number two, we have number 31, Marcus Jackson, the freshman halfback out of Oklahoma. At number three, we have number 20, Joseph Bailey, the junior halfback out of Michigan. And then at number four, we have number 30, Joel Perry, the senior halfback out of Miami. And then last, we have number four, John Mitchell, the junior red shirt halfback out of USC. So this week, guys, we are playing the Boston College Eagles who are 2-0 this year, 1-0 in the conference. They are ranked number 13 in the nation, but ranked number 15 in the media. When it comes to their injured players, they have Hill, their halfback, who's out for two weeks, and they have Jackson, their guard, who's out for seven weeks. In their last game, they were able to defeat Clemson 27-24. Clemson almost got away with the upset. Looking at their offensive leaders and passing, they have Wheeler with 22 completions out of 38 attempts. For 269 yards and two touchdowns, he has yet to throw an interception. Rushing, they have Wright, who has 46 attempts, 208 yards, 4.5 average, two touchdowns, and 104 yards per game. When it comes to receiving, they have Caesar with 11 receptions for 146 yards, averaging 13.3. He has one touchdown so far this year, and he's averaging 73 yards per game. Taking a look at their defensive leaders, they have Anderson, who's leading in tackles with 14, and he's also leading in sacks with two. And then they have Hunter, who's leading their team in interceptions with two. So that's going to do it for the team information for the Boston College Eagles. I'll see you guys out there on the field. So here we are guys at the Alumni Stadium in Chestnut Hill, Massachusetts to take on the number 13 Boston College Eagles. Can we get the upset? It's going to be first and 10 to 25 for Boston College. They're going to hand it off to Cook. Cook is fighting for yards and he gets brought down. A one yard pickup on the play and Joe Cross appears to have injured his hip on that one as he stumbles to get up. Man, what a crazy way to start this game. We have an injured player. It's going to be second and nine. Wheeler steps back, throws it to McDonald, McDonald makes the catch, and Williams was able to bring him down behind the line of scrimmage, it's going to be third and ten, a one yard lost on that play. Wheeler steps back, tries to find someone open, throws it, nearly intercepted, and now it's going to be three and out for Boston College, it's going to be first and ten for us at the 36, option play, Session has it, and he gets brought down. And we're just getting a report back that Joe Cross has a hip brucistus. He's going to be out for three weeks. Second and ten now. Johnson rolls out to his left. Takes it for himself. Tries to get a first down and he does. A first down and then some. And now it's going to be first and ten at the 49. Session has it. Juke move. And he's brought down. A six-yard pickup on that one. It's going to be second and four at the 45. Johnson rolls to his left, throws, intercepted by Justice, and we bring him down. But hold up, guys, there is a flag down on the play. Let's see who it's on. And it's going to be a defensive pass interference call. All right, all right, that's good. It's going to be first and 10 at the 33 for BYU. Johnson tries to find someone, throws across the middle, and Gabe Thomas makes the catch. It's going to be first and 10 at the 12 for BYU. 
Johnson. Rose to his right. Stop right there, and Johnson gets sacked on that one, man. They have a pretty good defensive line. It's going to be second and 15. Johnson. Rose to his right. Tries to find someone. Sees Thomas. And a little bit overthrown. It's going to be third and 15. Johnson. Rose to his left this time. And he gets brought down, man. Man, their defensive line is crazy. We got to watch out for that. Anyway, it's going to be 4th and 15 as we get ready for the kick. The kick is up, and the kick is good. Now it's going to be 1st and 10 for Boston College. Wheeler, hands off to right. No, it's the play action fake, and they're going to hand it to Cook. And Cook gets brought down on that one by Williams. It's going to be 2nd and 5, a 5-yard pickup on that one. Wheeler, hands off to right. Wright has it. He gets the first down. And it's going to be first and 10 to 47 for Boston College. Wheeler steps back. Throws it. Deep pass. And Caesar makes the catch. And he gets in for six. What was our defense doing? That was a 53-yard touchdown pass. And Boston College is up right now. Hands off the session, and session gets brought down. A big hit on that one. One-yard pickup on that play. Second and nine. Johnson. Stop right he gets there. sacked. Ah, man. And that's going to do it for the end of the first quarter with the score. The Boston College Eagles, seven. The BYU Cougars, three. So now it's going to be third and 18 for BYU. Johnson. Sees Thomas, and he gets tackled. Our offensive line needs to do better. It's going to be 1st and 10. Wheeler hands it off to right. He goes up the middle, and he gets stopped on that one. A 2-yard pickup on that play. Wheeler hands it off to right again. Right is going up the middle, and he's taken off. And he gets brought down by Brown. That rhymed. And now it's going to be 1st and 10 at the 32. Wheeler, play action. Throws it to Hunter. Hunter breaks a tackle, and he's going to go all the way in for a touchdown, man. The score is now 14-3, and BYU isn't looking too good. Johnson, option play, hands it to Session. He gets a first down, and he goes out of bounds. Good job. First and 10 now at the 29. Johnson, rolls to the left. Sees Howell, and he overthrew that pass. Second and 10 now. Johnson rolls to his right this time. Sees Gabe Thomas, and overthrown again. Come on, Dallas Johnson. You won for six right now. Third and 10. Johnson. Stop right there. And he gets sacked. And Dallas Johnson appears to have injured his knee on that play. Our offensive line can't do anything. Dallas Johnson is not making a... Uh, the right adjustments to passing. We got to do better. Wright goes up the field. And he gets brought down. A six-yard pickup on that one. Wheeler has it. Takes for himself. And he gets brought down behind the line of scrimmage. It's going to be third and nine. Wheeler. Throws it across the middle. And that should have been intercepted. And now it's going to be first and ten for BYU. We got to do something here. Johnson. Rose to his left. Sees Bonet, and Bonet makes the catch. First and 10 for BYU. With only a minute and 25 seconds left to go. We can, we can do this. Come on. HB screen. Session has it. Juke move, and he gets brought down. It's going to be second and nine now. Johnson. Rose to his left. Sees Morris, and he makes the catch. First down. Let's go. With only a minute left in this quarter. Let's see what we can do. Hand off the session. And he gets met behind the line of scrimmage. He looks to be a little tired on that one. As we use our first timeout. Johnson. Rolls to the left. Tries to find someone. Throws it downfield. Trying to go for it all. And an incomplete pass. It's going to be third and 11. And we're not doing so well on third down conversions. We're zero for three. Johnson. Rolls to his left. He's going to take it for himself, and he gets the first down, and he goes out of bounds. Good job. First and 10. Johnson steps back, rolls to his right, sees how, and that's going to go out of bounds. Okay.
Second and ten. Play action. Throws it downfield to Howell once again, and it's going to be incomplete. It's going to be third and ten. Johnson backs up once again, tries to find someone. Sees Bonet who makes the catch, and we're at the two-yard line. Good job. First and goal. Session has it. Juke move. Fool the defender, and we get in for six. Look at that juke. He made him <laughs> jump the other way. <laughs> well, dive the other way. And that's going to do it, guys. It's halftime with a score 14 to 10. That was a good push in the second quarter. First and 10 now for BYU. Hands off the session, and he gets brought down. It's going to be second and 10. No, uh, no gain on that play. Johnson. Rolls to his left. Sees Thomas. Thomas makes the catch, but I wish he didn't die for it. It's going to be third and inches. And I took too long trying to decide what play I want to do on third and inches. That's going to be a five-yard penalty. It's going to be third and five now. Option play. Johnson has it. He's going to hold on to it. And he gets the first down. Good job. First and ten. Hands off the session. Trying to go upfield. And he gets brought down. A three-yard pickup on that one. It's going to be second and seven. Excuse me, second and seven. Johnson hands off to Morris. Morris makes a catch, takes a big hit, but he's able to hold on to it. And Dallas Johnson, he has completed three consecutive passes so far. Johnson rolls to his left. Sees Morris. Morris makes the catch. Good job. All right, we're doing pretty well right now with the passing game. Second and inches. Session has it. And he's going to get brought down. Did he get the first down? No. It's going to be third and inches. Option play. Johnson has it. Throws up the session. And that's going to be a first down. Okay, we're doing pretty well. Eight plays. 51 yards. Man. Johnson rolls to his left. Sees how. How makes the catch. And he's going to get in for six. And now we're leading 17 to 14. Good job for Dallas Johnson, who stepped up in the third quarter. Look at this pass. And how gets a touchdown, man. Way to go. I was a little bit worried because we weren't doing so well in the first half. We were getting sacked. The offensive line, weren't they weren't blocking. Anyway, it's going to be first and 10 now for Boston College. Wheeler steps back. Sees McDonald. McDonald makes the catch. He gets the first down, and he gets brought down. First and 10 now. Wheeler hands off to right, who goes up, goes up the middle. And I hate that tackle animation. Could you just add five yards to that play? It's going to be second and four. Wheeler hands off to right. And right gets a first down. And he finally gets brought down. And it's going to be the end of the third quarter. We are leading. We can do this. We can beat the number 13 team in the nation. Let's go. It's going to be the fourth quarter now. They're going to be spotted at the 40. Wheeler hands it off to Wright. Wright cuts up the middle. No one can get to him. And Williams brings him down. We're having a hard time getting to this running back. Wheeler hands it off to Wright again. And Wright, he has the blockers. And Reed is able to bring him down. Another first down for Boston College. They're going to be spotted at the eight. First and goal. And it's a fumble. Get it. Get it. And we got it. Reed was able to get it. He's able to get the fumble recovery. With only three minutes and 30 seconds left. We can do this. Hands off the session. Session. Spin move. And not the play I want to do. But it's going to be second and 10. Johnson steps back. He's going to try to look for somebody. He's going to take it for himself. And he gets tackled out of bounds. It's going to be third and four. Option play. And it's a fumble. Get it. And Session gets the first down. All right. Way to go. <laughs> first and 10. Hands off to Session. And Session gets brought down. A one-yard pickup on that one. Hands off the Session again. We're just trying to milk the clock here. 
and it's going to be third and seven. We are five and eight when it comes to third down conversions. A big uh, step up from the first quarter. Johnson has it, and he's going to dive. All right, get the first down, but stay inbounds. And it's going to be first and ten for BYU with only a minute and 40 seconds left. Hands off the session. And Session fumbles the football, and Hunter picks it up. What in the world was that? We fumbled the football. All we had to do was run out the clock. It's going to be first and 10 for Boston College at the 49. Wheeler steps back, throws it across the middle to Caesar. He gets a first down. We got to get a stop here. Wheeler steps back, throws it. And McDonald make the, how did he make that catch? It's going to be first and 10 now. See, it's always in the fourth quarter. The AI wants to go Super Saiyan out of nowhere. And look, Reed couldn't get that interception. But he's celebrating like he did something good. Second and 10. Second and 10 now. Throws it to Martin. He's able to get his foot inbound. It's going to be third and seven. And they go out of bounds. Okay. We got to get a stop here. Wheeler. Right and we get the sack. All right. Good job by our defense. Good job for Golden. That's his second sack of the season. And now they're going to get ready to kick the field goal here. The kick is up. Nearly blocked. And they get in. And they're able to tie this one. The score is 17-17. As that's going to be the end of regulation as we head over the overtime. And we get ball first in overtime. Okay, first and 10. I like playing defense first in overtime. Johnson gets brought down. Oh, man. A one-yard pickup, though, so it wasn't bad. It's not that bad. Second and nine now. Johnson tries to find someone. Sees Whitworth, and Whitworth couldn't make the catch. It's going to be third and nine. Man, that would have been a touchdown right there. Johnson, he gets sacked. They blitz with the cornerback. And now it's going to be fourth and 16. Man. Man, oh man. That was pretty smart. I didn't think the AI would use the cornerback and blitz because that's a dangerous play. Anyway, we're going to get ready for the field goal. A 48-yard kick. The kick is up. And it's no good. So now it's going to be first and 10 for the Boston College Eagles. Let's see if we can get a stop here. Wheeler steps back. Throws it. And Martin makes the catch, and that's going to be the end of the game as we lost in overtime to number 13, Boston College Eagles. What a terrible way to lose. We are currently on a two-game losing streak after losing to Tulsa last week, well, in the last video. Oh, boy, we had that game. We had it. Why did Session have to fumble? Man, that's crazy. So now we're going to take a look at the lag on log player of the game. And it's going to be number 15, Logan Wheeler, the senior redshirt quarterback who went 9 for 12 for 155 yards and three touchdowns. He had a great game. Only three incompletions, man. Man, but anyway, guys, that's going to do it for this one. Let's go ahead and take a look at the game stats. So that's going to do it, guys. We lost a close one, 23-17 to to Boston College. It was a good game, but overall, we know who the better team was. When it comes to first downs, we had 13. They had 12. Total offense, we had 217. They had 247. We did good rushing somewhat. I mean, 26 rushes for 66 yards, and we could do a little bit better. And they went 13 for 92. In terms of passing, we went 9 for 18 and scored one touchdown. Boston College went 9 for 12 and scored three touchdowns. Passing yards, we had 151. They had 155. We got sacked four times today, and we sacked Boston College two times. We did good on third down conversions, going 6 of 10 and stopping Boston College. They went 0 for 3. We were in the red zone two times. We were able to score a touchdown and kick a field goal. They were in the red zone one time, and they didn't score or do anything with it. Turnovers, both teams had one. We bumped the ball twice and lost it once. 
once. Uh, Boston College fumbled once and lost it. Total yards, we had 302. They had 336. And then time possession, we had 921. They had 639. Taking a look at individual stats now, uh, number 12, Dallas Johnson had 138.8 QB rating. He had nine completions out of 18 attempts, 151 yards, one touchdown, no interceptions, and a 50, per, uh, 50 completion percentage. Moving over to rushing, Nate Session had 41 yards today, averaging 2.7, and he scored one touchdown. Taking a look at receiving, Marcus Morris had three receptions for 45 yards. Zach Bonet had two receptions for 49. Gabe Thomas had two receptions for 31. Michael Howell had one reception for 25. And Nate Session had uh, one reception for one yard. Michael Howell was the only one to get a receiving touchdown today. Defensively, Kenneth Golden had four tackles today. Alongside Jake Williams, they both recorded four tackles. Tackle for loss leader, we have number 91, Kenneth Golden. He led our team in tackles for loss with three. And he also led our team in sacks with two. Actually, he was the only person to get a sack today. And he also forced a fumble, which is pretty good. And then we have Eddie Reed, who got a fumble recovery. So guys, moving over to kicking, number 30, Robert Clark went one for two today. I really wish he made that field goal in overtime, but you know it is what it is. He made one field goal, you know, going 50%, and his longest was a 34-yard kick. So now, guys, taking a look at the NCAA Players of the Week for Week 4. On offense, we have number 12, uh, Fuqua. I think that's how you pronounce his name. He's the junior redshirt quarterback out of South Carolina. As they defeated Wolford 42-0, he went 21 for 28 for 263 yards. So defensively, we have number 7, Ray, the senior redshirt strong safety out of Ball state as they've defeated purdue 28 to 21 and i think that's an upset i think purdue's ring but yeah that's crazy he had seven tackles two interceptions and two fumble recovery now taking a look at the mountain west conference players of the week for week four we have number 18 carter the senior redshirt halfback out of colorado state as they defeated nevada 27 to 7 uh, he had 39 carries for 153 yards one touchdown two uh, receptions for 14 yards and a touchdown and then defensively we have number 98 hughes the senior red shirt right uh right in from UNLV. As they defeated Hawaii 24 to 19, he had seven tackles, two forced fumbles, and a fumble recovery. So guys, in the next video, we will be playing Utah State Aggies, who are one and two so far this year. They have a C plus overall, a C offense, and a C plus defense. We are currently on a two game losing streak. I wish we didn't lose those last two games, but you know, it is what it is. You know, they are very close games, but you know, we just have to play better uh, in these next games coming up. But anyway, guys, that's gonna do it for this one. If you like what you see and you like to see more please like comment and subscribe let me know how i'm doing down in the comment section below and i'll see you guys in the next video take care